Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Gaza terrorists sent 5,000 rockets and now 700 Israelis are dead. A court rules that parents of transgender kids may not castrate them. In New Jersey, rules to steal Christian kids for LGBT groomers. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? On today's show, we're gonna begin by praying for Israel, who is under attack. And the latest numbers, as of this report, are that 5,000 rockets have been launched, mostly from the Gaza Strip, and now some from the north, from Lebanon. Hamas terrorists, backed by Iran, are killing Jews. Christian Post reports the death toll as of today, is at least 700 Israelis killed in Hamas attacks that began Saturday. And rescuers found 260 bodies at the site of the Rave Music Festival. Young people enjoying music suddenly surrounded and shot. Insurgent forces came across the border from Gaza into Israel and attacked the southern towns in person. And now, there are 2,300 wounded in Gaza itself. As Prime Minister Netanyahu said in response, Israel is at a state of war and launched helicopter attacks, killing perhaps 400 or more people in the Gaza Strip in retaliation, targeting the same place that the rockets were launched from, according to latest update from Palestinian officials. Americans were also killed, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken told news media on Sunday that it's believed several American citizens are among those killed by Hamas terrorists on the Israeli side of the border. Hamas gunmen in those insurgency attacks killed at least 600 Israelis, injuring over 1,800 more, and sadly they took over 100 hostages. In a surprise assault, this is the worst and deadliest attack against Israel since the Yom Kippur War over 50 years ago. Let's roll now a clip of President Biden from the White House standing with Israel. This is Israel under attack, orchestrated by a terrorist organization, Hamas. In this moment of tragedy, I want to say to them and to the world and to terrorists everywhere that the United States stands with Israel. We will not ever fail to have their back. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. You know, the world's seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in the space of hours raining down on Israeli cities. When I got up this morning, and started this at 7.30, 8 o'clock, my calls, Hamas terrorists crossing in Israel, killing not only Israeli soldiers, but Israeli civilians in the street, in their homes, innocent people murdered, wounded, entire families taken hostage by Hamas. Just days after Israel marked the holiest of days in the Jewish calendar, it's unconscionable. You know, when I spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu this morning, I told him the United States stands with the people of Israel in the face of these terrorist assaults. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people, full stop. There's never justification for terrorist attacks. And my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. Let me say this as clearly as I can. This is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. The world is watching. I've also been in contact with the King of Jordan, spoken with members of Congress, directed my national security team to engage with their Israeli counterparts military to military, intelligence to intelligence, dipl diplomat to diplomat, to make sure Israel has what it needs. I've also directed my team to remain in constant contact with leaders throughout the region, including Egypt, Turkey, Qatar, 
Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Oman, the UAE, as well as our European partners and the Palestinian Authority. It's also a terrible tragedy on a human level. It's hurting innocent people, seeing the lives that have been broken by this, the families torn apart. It's heartbreaking. And Jill and I are praying for those families who've been impacted by this violence. We grieve with those who've lost their loved ones, lost a piece of their soul. We have hope for a swift recovery for many who have been wounded. But we're going to remain in close touch with Prime Minister. I personally am going to remain in close contact with Prime Minister Netanyahu as this situation continues to develop. And let there be no mistake, the United States stands with the State of Israel. Just as we have from the moment the United States became the first nation to recognize Israel 11 minutes after its founding 75 years ago. Thank you very much. Mr. President, was there uh, an intelligence failure in the lead up to this attack? Mr. President, can you tell us what Phoebe asked you specifically for support? So there you saw our thanks to President Biden for standing with Israel as we have been asking him to do, right? By sending our journalist, Dr. Anthony Harper, to the White House. And there was a gaffe, we have to explain a little bit. Um, when these t attacks first happened Saturday, the Biden administration was against Israel. The State Department sent out a tweet saying, oh, we don't want Israel to defend herself. No retaliatory, retaliatory attacks against the terrorists? Seriously? Well, that was called out by Senator Ted Cruz, who, and that tweet has since been deleted. So the US State Department has repented. Now, as you saw, President Biden is fully behind Israel as we should be. The Bible says this in Genesis 12, God promises, I will bless those who bless you, Israel, descendants of Abraham, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let's pray for Israel right now. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for peace in Jerusalem, as it says in Psalm uh, 122. Lord, we, we call upon you that you would be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that all of the descendants of especially the Jewish people would be blessed with peace. And Father, we pray that America as a Christian nation would stand firm with our closest ally in the Middle East. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a court rules that parents of transgender kids don't have the freedom to castrate them. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. We're here in Israel, in literally the scene of all of the holy sites, like the Via Dolorosa, where Jesus carried his cross, the garden tomb where he was raised from the dead, the Sea of Galilee, where he taught the disciples. And I prayed, Lord, how can I bring this inspiring environment into your living room? And what we've produced is a four DVD disc set with the entire Gospel of Matthew. I teach every verse in all 28 chapters of Matthew in short 12 minute segments so you can understand the exact words that Jesus taught from the exact location where Jesus lived. Pick up the phone right now and call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. For a suggested donation of just $50, we'll give you all four discs, the entire Gospel of Matthew, or you can write to us at the address on your screen or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You're gonna love this Bible teaching. Pick up the phone and call us today. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, Jesus taught the parable about sowing the seed, and you don't want it wasted. You want it to grow with 30, 60, 100 fold for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you three mission areas that we're doing here at Pray in Jesus' Name. I think our charity does more with less than any other charity I know. We are fertile seed. For example, number one, we pray in millions of television homes every day or every weekend on eight networks, we have 2.5 billion home TV impressions every month. The second area, we feed orphans and children in some of the poorest slums overseas. We're building a new vocational school, we're digging wells, and we're serving the poor when you give to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, we defend religious freedom, especially for our troops and our chaplains. We've now helped send five million petitions to Congress 
We've helped change bad laws or policies in 13 states and four times in federal law. You know my story as a former Navy chaplain, standing up for the right to pray in Jesus' name and defending religious freedom. Would you donate today? In fact, we want you to come up monthly pledge sponsor. When you visit PrayInJesusName.org, on the right side, click the monthly pledge sponsor button at PrayInJesusName.org. Your monthly gift will help change the world in Jesus' name. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next report comes from NBC News, who reports. There is a court now who has ruled the parents of transgender kids are not allowed to castrate them, that is in red states like Tennessee and Kentucky. But in blue states like California and New York, they can still castrate children, shockingly. Uh, but anyway, the good news is a federal court ruled in Tennessee and Kentucky to enforce state laws banning child castration, which they call gender affirming care for minors, such as puberty blockers, hormones, and even surgery. By a two to one vote, the Cincinnati, Ohio based Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals rejected a challenge by families of transgender children who argued for parental rights to castrate their children. Well, that's not parental rights, it's parental wrongs. They claimed that they were being discriminated on the basis of sex because they were not allowed to castrate their children, but that's nonsense. The ruling by a second of federal course appeal, uh, appeals courts are now upholding red state laws after the 11th Circuit revived a similar law in Alabama. But on the other side of the ledger, some federal courts have ruled the opposite, such as in Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, they've overturned bans on child castration, as has a state court in Montana. So this is probably bound for the US Supreme Court at some point. Mainstream US medical associations say that child castration is appropriate and potentially life-saving treatment for gender dysphoria or distress caused by a mismatch between transgender people's God-given sex at birth and their gender identity, which is their confusion in their mind. But the Sixth Circuit panel sided with the proponents of bans on child abuse, who say that the treatments are unproven and risk permanently harming or sterilizing children. And the parents don't have a right to do that necessarily. Chief Judge Jeffrey Sutton, who was joined by Judge Amul Tapar, said the following, quote, this is a relatively new diagnosis they're talking about um, gender dysphoria, right? With ever shifting approaches to care over the last decade or two, under these circumstances, it is difficult for anyone to be sure about predicting the long-term consequences of abandoning age limits of any sort for these treatments, end quote. In other words, the left wants to have it younger and younger and younger that any child can be chemically or surgically castrated, uh, but in, in red states like Tennessee and Kentucky, they have passed state laws to ban that nonsense. <clears throat> one of the dissenting voices, that, remember the ruling was two to one in the Ohio Sixth Circuit, just Judge Helene White, she gave a dissenting opinion saying that statutes that ban child castration cannot pass constitutional muster and intrude on the well-established province of parents to castrate their minor children. You've gotta be kidding. Most uh, of the bans in red states have been blocked by previous trial court judges, but now the Sixth Circuit Appeals Court is allowing that to take effect while the appeal continues. The judge overseeing the Kentucky case allowed the state ban to go into effect as well, saying he was bound but to follow the Sixth Circuit ruling, which hears appeals from both states. Lawyers for the families who brought the Tennessee challenge, including Lambda Legal and the Anti-Christian Liberties Union, ACLU, called the ruling a devastating result for transgender youth and their families, and said, we are assessing our next steps in defense of transgender rights to castrate children. That is the news. Our thanks to NBC News for that report. That was straight from NBC. The only thing I threw in there was 
I rephrased. Every time they say gender-affirming care, that's what NBC reported, I said the right to castrate children, because that's what they're actually doing, right? So NBC is wrong when they say it's gender-affirming care. It's, they're not affirm, listen, they're not affirming God's chosen gender of that child. It, in a minute, we're going to talk about New Jersey and how they're kidnapping children to give them to LGBT groomers. The, but the Bible says this in Deuteronomy 23, He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter the congregation of the Lord. God is against that kind of abuse, especially of children. We'll take a short break. When we come back, New Jersey is trying to rule to steal Christian kids for LGBT groomers. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I want to introduce my friend, Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry and the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray in Jesus Names Ministry. Dr. Chaps here, but this great ministry needs your support and you can, you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm gonna put them right back into this, into your amazing charity and show. My employees and I are excited to announce it's our 20th anniversary. And to celebrate, we're bringing you a limited edition MyPillow. The Giza Elegance MyPillow is made with the most amazing cotton. Two inch pipe gusset comes in four custom loft levels and it's machine washable and dryable. When I got my pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported in the line. That's why we've been around for 20 years because my pillow works. Go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary my pillow queen size. Retails for 69.98, now only 19.98. That's right, only 19.98. With my 60-day money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sleep well, America. Over the last 20 years, with all your support, we've been able to not only launch the original My Pillow, but also the My Pillow mattress topper, Giza Dream bed sheets, My Slippers, and the My Pillow bath towels. But there's so much more. In fact, we have over 200 products, and I'm so confident that you'll love each and every one of them that when you go to mypillow.com now, you'll immediately receive a free gift valued at $20 just for checking out the website. No purchase necessary. Get everything from my pillow blankets, sleepwear, kitchen towels, mattresses, duvets, pet beds, body pillows, comforters, couch pillows, bathrobes, and so much more. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. And remember, just for checking out mypillow.com, you'll immediately receive a free gift valued at $20. No purchase necessary. This is a limited time promotion, so go to mypillow.com now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from the Center for Golden State Families, a pro-family organization who reports New Jersey is now ruling to, or trying to pass a law to steal Christian children for LGBT groomers. The New Jersey legislature, with the help of State Senator Andrew Zwicker and four assembly members, have introduced Senate Bill 3592 or Assembly Bill 5180 that establishes certain procedures for persons receiving or, and allowing children to receive gender affirming health care. But the devil is in the details. Here are some statements from the actual, actual legislation. Quote Specifically, the bill amends previous laws, the, the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction and Enforcement Act, to stipulate that one, the presence of the child in this state for the purpose of receiving transgender affirming health care is sufficient for the state court to have jurisdiction to make an initial child custody determination for a child. So they're talking about child custody. Who, what parent is gonna have the kid? And it continues. The state, other than merely physical presence, number two, the court of this state has temporary emergency jurisdiction if the child is present in the state and if the child is unable to receive transgender affirming health care in the child's home state. So no neighboring states 
they can send their kids to New Jersey for those kind of surgeries. Number three, a court of this state, New Jersey, is the appropriate forum to exercise jurisdiction in a child custody case. Child custody cases, they're gonna take kids away from Christian parents. When the law or policy of the other state that may take jurisdiction limits the ability of the parent to obtain transgender affirming health care, that is child castration. If you're unable to get that kind of surgery, bring it to New Jersey, we'll cut it off. And number four, in making a determination about whether a court in this case can decline to exercise this jurisdiction over a child custody case, the court cannot consider the taking or keeping of the child from the person who has legal, physical custody or visitation rights as a factor weighing against the petitioner in the case. Here's, here's the smoking gun, right? If there is evidence that taking or keeping the child was so that the child could receive gender affirming health care, end quote. In other words, if, if the other state's law says, oh, the Christian parent is preventing them from getting the surgery, New Jersey law would take precedence and the child could get the surgery and be given not to the Christian parent, but back to the transgender affirming parent or guardian or agency or LGBT groomer. They're taking, literally taking Christian kids away from parents in other states and giving them to people who do surgeries in New Jersey. What Senate Bill 3592 means in operation is that the state of New Jersey can essentially become a sanctuary state for individuals, including children, to receive castration care. For example, a mother wants to affirm and support the decision of her minor child born as a biological boy to become a girl. The father of the boy refuses to allow that treatment or otherwise coddle his son's fantasy that he's somehow gonna become a girl. But the mother decides, I'm gonna take my son to New Jersey so that my son can be castrated and become a girl. Well, the father goes to court back in his home state, let's say Pennsylvania or somewhere nearby. Uh, and in this case, the son and the mother refuse to bring the boy back. Guess what happens? The state of New Jersey will deny the parent in Pennsylvania, the Christian parent, and affirm the kidnapping parent who wants to chemically castrate or physically castrate her son in New Jersey. And you can guess where that law is gonna bring the judges. The 10 pages of this proposed law will make New Jersey a sanctuary state for minors wanting to be castrated. There are numerous reports of nationwide child receiving hormone blockers, chemical castration as early as eight years old they would permanently sterilize a child. Other girls as, long, as young as 11 years old having a double mastectomy because the 11 year old feels like she wants to be a boy. Prepubescent boys receiving hormone blockers so that they never sexually mature. And this is bad news. It affects brain development, cardiovascular development, musculoskeletal development, and no child has the mental or emotional capacity to make this kind of permanent life altering decision. But if the New Jersey bill becomes a law, it's gonna become a hub for that kind of child abuse. It's legalizing human trafficking to bring a child across state lines without the consent of both parents and it's against the law of another state. That's the news, our thanks to the Center for Golden State Families for that report. Child abuse is against God's law. And I don't, call, I don't care what they call it in New Jersey, it is chemical or surgical mutilation of a child that they're facilitating, making it easier. Jesus condemns that when he says in Matthew 18, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it'd be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he'd be drowned in the depths of the sea. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray against the recruiting and kidnapping, honestly, of children for the sake of transgender madness. Father, this is not the right of a parent. Uh, this is not the right of the state to step in and take away a child from a Christian home and give them to someone who's going to hurt them. Father, instead we pray 
that every child will be protected and our laws will reflect the word of God, which bans any kind of child abuse whatsoever. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. The Bible says this in James 1, that pure religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. You know, we have been sponsoring up to 259 orphans and children in one of the poorest states in India for many years, but now there is a famine of biblical proportions happening because of the unemployment there. We are sponsoring people who otherwise cannot feed themselves. We've given over $10,000 to feed up to 100,000 meals to the poorest of poor in one of the poorest states in the world. We need your support. We need your financial contributions. Can you help us? There's somebody out there watching who could give $1,000 or even $10,000 toward a matching gift for what we have already provided. Please donate today. PrayInJesusName.org is our website. Or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please help us feed the poor today. Maybe you've enjoyed our program and you're wondering, how can we support Dr. Chaps with our tithes and offerings? We've made it so easy right now. You don't even need to go to the website. Just use your smartphone and text the word DONATE to 720-573-0305. You don't even have to get out of your chair. Just pick up your smartphone right now and text the word DONATE to 720 720- 573-0305 and you will help us bring you these programs. God bless you in Jesus' name. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name, but Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and supporting us at PrayInJesusName.org. That is our website. We need your donations, large or small, to bring you this viewer-sponsored show. Please donate through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Luke 3, he answered and said, if any of you has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Please donate today. If you need prayer, call us now at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.